confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. <laughs> Welcome back to Stogie Geeks. I am your host this week, Joe Hosepa. Brand new host of Stogie Geeks. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. We, if you are just tuning into the live session, we uh, and you're, you're late, but that's okay. You're not the only one who's late. Drew is late to his own uh, one year anniversary party here. So if Drew doesn't make his uh, congressman visit at this point. Um, we're going to have to reschedule his, his one year. Uh, it'll, I, I specifically wanted it to be episode 335, but that's okay. Yeah. It'll be 336. Why, why 335? I don't know. I just, I, like I, the number? I just, no, no. I just said in my mind when I was going through the, the here, I was like, okay, 335. We got it. And I said to Johnny, like off the air, for those of you who don't know, who are just listening, that's our audio and video engineer who does a remarkable job. And now we have two. We have Gustavo, who should be doing the switcher as well. So, Adam, say something so Gustavo can switch. Yo, what's going on, Gustavo? Are you paying attention? There you go. He is, because the bottom yeah, screen is there, we there you go. <laughs> All right. So, so he's, doing, he's doing a great job. And, um, you know, he's thrown through the wolves on the other podcast, for sure. <laughs> right? But, um, you know, uh, and and so I, I just had, it like, Johnny, like, okay, we got to do the new intro. We got to have Drew, blah, 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 like 335. And then... That's all, because we, we usually run around here at G-Unit Studios with our pants on fire for sure. G-Unit um, Studios? That's what that's what this is called? Yes, sir. I freaking love it. Because you you, you're at G-Unit. Yeah, no, I know. Oh, yeah, duh. Yeah, yeah. I'm at yeah. J. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so. Yeah, so if you want J-Unit, then there you go. Uh, I can't use the J, let's be honest. <laughs> you know. um, yes, so... I wanted to take this time just so we know, Stogie Geeks. It takes me. It takes sometimes. It's not as easy saying, "Hey, we got this podcast. You should come on and 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 uh, you know we'll do a show." And uh, you know, I, I think that the consumers would 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 like the content there. Adam and I had spoken about him coming on Stogie Geeks eight months ago. Oh, just God. so we're scoring at home. And I had and I went through um, when we were on break my Adam questions, which I have filed oh, here, and. Um, you, it, no, because I think you, your, every everyone here has their place in any industry, right? We interview uh, someone like in segment one, where we interview Enrique, and talk about his perspective, obviously where his stuff is rolled, the stories behind his 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 uh, blends, and where he's positioned here in business. You have the luxury of working in this industry, <laughs> of choosing what goes into a, <laughs> choosing quote, of unquote. what goes into the humidor, and then you also have the luxury of not only ordering, back ordering, and 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 oh, and, no. and problems that can happen with certain vendors and all of that stuff, but you also you're the true boots on the ground of um moving the product mm. for the organization and putting it into the consumer's hands mm. so i want you to put that hat on right and i'm sure you're a a, a part-time psychiatrist for some patrons and all yes. of that too but <laughs> <laughs> listen i probably put those guys through like send them to a therapist just because of what they're hearing around my mouth <laughs> let alone like what i'm hearing out of theirs <laughs> you know so. and enrique touched about the camaraderie and all of that and the benefits of going into a brick and mortar i always get emails from stogie geeks that say you know joe you you, you talk about like this cigar shop culture mm -hmm. and they their nearest cigar shop could be 45 minutes to an hour oh. they would go like once a month mm -hmm. or sometimes three times a year which ultimately that's your competition as well because they're getting the product online mm -hmm. right and and, and there but i, I want to talk to you ab about uh, what's the You've been in the industry for well over five years. Uh, probably around six or something like six that. Six years. Yeah, about okay. 
four years of it was pretty yep. blurry. Yep, same, same usually is, right? <laughs> yeah. It's been blurry for me too, <laughs> right? I mean, I've been for three years, and it's, it's been a, it's been a, a barrage mm-hmm. of, of blur, right? Mm-hmm. Um, interviews, some of them really stick out. I make reference to them, and, and others, like we've, like Enrique uh, uh, alluded to, they've come and gone, mm-hmm. right? You, you, ha- you, just like they have to deal with their market share of getting on your shelf, you have to deal with the, with the getting on the shelf, keeping it organized, doing that, um, making sure that the humidor fits the persona of the shop, mm-hmm. gathering what the consumer behavior is, all of that type of stuff. Um, questions are pretty simple. When someone walks into... Havana cigar shop, right? I want you to, I want you to describe what you want their experience to be. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then my next question is: take them, take us through, and the story geeks who are listening through the customer journey of walking through a humidor that has well over four to six hundred facings in it, mm. because I think that's important because. When I go to any cigar shop, doesn't matter if it's yours, doesn't matter if it's one that only has 80 facings, right? Um, I'm often doing computer work, Mm -hmm. as we, as you know, I'm fixture. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) you know. As a matter of fact, I was at a pool party on Sunday, and two patrons from another shop came in and they said, "Jojo." This is the first time ever they saw me swim in the pool. I had my son. I had my girl. I'm, I'm chasing my son around. They said, Jojo, this is the first time I've seen you in a cigar shop without a computer. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, but it's in the car. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. It's not too far away for you. <laughs> it's not Just too in far case. away. You know, just in case I get pinged, you know, because, oh, yeah. you know, we're, we're in an industry that never sleeps, uh, either in the cigar world or in, in the security world, right? But um, w- w- what I notice is that sometimes – there's a customer reluctance. Mm-hmm. You know when someone walks into the shop, where, especially if they're on an errand and they're shopping for a significant other. Oh, yeah. And this sticks out to me because my significant other had the opportunity th- this week. And this was the first time in a long time that she actually went out and picked out cigars for me. Really? Yeah. No. Which How'd which is a, like huge hurdle. Huge yeah. hurdle. We'll, we'll get to how she did. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right? We'll get to how she did because it, it's funny because she's like, I don't know. Like I was telling him, I was, t- I, I, you know, I didn't want to, I, I knew you know him, but I didn't want to say like it's Joe yeah. and whatnot. And, 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 and she went to a totally random place. Like you would think she would go to either Havana or Churchill. Nope. She went yeah. to, she was like, no, I'm not going there because, because, because the because you're always there and you always say that different shops have different things so she tried to get r- very unique and she did she did well and we'll get to that we'll we'll, we'll end the episode with that mm-hmm. but not so much the reluctance of someone buying a gift for someone but what do you want like y- y- you have to inventory you have to move product right what's that customer journey like what's in your head and how you want that customer journey to, to go out. Because you have to have, you have to be able to, you especially have to be able to pivot fast, especially if they purchase a smoke and not consume it there. Oh, yeah. You know, so take take us through some of that and elaborate that um, there for, for, for the story geese. Because I really want them to see the benefit of walking into a brick and mortar. And maybe the 40, for the, for the ones that email me and say that the brick and mortar is 45 minutes away each way, mm, right? Yeah. <laughs> it might be worth for you to go, right? <laughs> yeah, it might be. I mean, it's just, um, like, I'm going to generalize it because it's just like every situation is different at the end of the day. It doesn't matter exactly, um, you know, it's just, uh, it varies from shop to shop. It varies <clears> from person to person, like you said. So I'm going to just generalize it. It was, um, I know for myself, and I can speak for also the rest of uh, the Havana fam, over next door and whatnot that we want to make sure that everybody ha- is comfortable you know at the end of the day we want everybody to be comfortable because it doesn't matter exactly you know if you hit the right cigar perfectly mm-hmm. but if you make people feel comfortable and you build that trust because it's two-way street you know it's a trust thing it's a community thing where you just want to respect each other you want to love each other you want to care about each other <laughs> so that's the first thing that always goes through my head it's just like how can I make this person feel comfortable, you know? And then you start kind of branching off on that, 
you know it's just like especially when somebody who is like you said your significant other who doesn't know what you smoke doesn't smoke cigars doesn't know exactly what um you know different blends are different brands are anything like that now you guys start doing some feeler questions here and there mm -hmm. you know and try to narrow it down now if you name drop then that makes it a lot easier well i was gonna say if, if i was waiting for you to finish if you walk in the Havana Club, they can give the name and you can pull up the purchases of what they have. So at least you have a profile go to. Yeah. Or if I know you well enough, I was just like, well, okay, I know this guy's kind of conservative a little bit. You know, I don't want to really branch off too much because it's just like, I know, you know, he has a very picky palate or he has a very specific palate. Should actually be a better uh, word to say, you know, instead of picky. It's just, uh, that might have been a little passive aggressiveness. But anyway, mm -hmm. but it's just um, a very specific palate. But somebody like you, I know, can walk into a shop and it's just be like, you know what? I know he smokes X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. You know what? Here's something brand new or here's something that I know he hasn't picked up in a while. Mm -hmm. Something that I can go from there. You know, but it's just, it's all about comfort. It's, like you said, especially with the reluctant customers, if you make them feel more comfortable with it, it's going to be a better experience for them. You know, and that's one benefit for going to a brick and mortar is that when you go in and you got to fill it, feel out the brick and mortars. I, one thing I cannot stand is I've gone to multiple shops, not even just in Rhode Island. And nice, here comes a rant. Keep going. Uh, yep, it's, uh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, now you're speaking my language. Oh, trust me. <laughs> I got a story about one shop out in New York. I'm not going to name drop them, but it was, um, it was one of those things where it's just like you walk in, and the one thing is we're always sold to. On everything in life, we're always sold on something. Yep. You know, like Apple sells us, Nike sells us, you know, Samsung sells us. It doesn't matter what we do, Toyota, Lexus. It's just we're sold to. Mm -hmm. We're not actually brought in to actually create an experience or do something like that. So I was at a shop, and I'm sitting there, and it was um actually these are two stories. But it was uh, I walked into a shop, and I just got started in the industry. You know, it's, uh, so I kind of know what's going on, but I don't really know what's going on. And it's um like, listen, this is what I smoke, X, Y, and Z. And then I started paying attention. Next thing you know, I see the guy reach out, and he's just like, oh, have you ever smoked a Padron? I'm like, yep, I'm already done with the spot. You know? And it's just like, it's a, you know, first of all, that's one of the most well-known names. I know the price tag on it. Right. Everybody does. Yeah. I'm like, if you're going to reach for that, then I can't trust you. Because yep. now you're just look, you're looking at me as a number. Yep. Now, if you go a little bit more in-depth into it, and that's why I say making people feel comfortable, that's when I like to go in, and I'll keep seeing them. Because I know they're going to toss me something. They're not going to just sell me something that they're trying to offload. You know, and it's just like, especially when I got into it. And that's why I say that's a benefit to a brick and mortar is because it's when you go in and you start talking to them and you get to know them, you can expand your horizons, you know, at the end of the day. And, that thing, and that's what this comes down to. It's just like, I bounce around from cigar to cigar. I don't have a specific thing that I like. Mm -hmm. You know, I want something different. But that is a negative experience. So that's something that, like, we all pay attention to, mm -hmm. you know. So another time I was out in New York and I went to a shop. And, you know, you're paying taxes on that stuff. And it was in, you know, it's in NYC. So get ready for the overhead yeah, charge oh yeah. on top of it. You know, it ain't just taxes. Everyone says taxes, but there's overhead too down there. I'm paying $33 for like a $10 smoke. Yep. You know, I'm sitting there. I'm talking with my friends. You know, guy brings it over. <coughs> absolutely gorgeous spot. He cuts it. And he holds it for a second. And I'm not even looking at him. I'm just talking to my friends. And I'm just like, yeah, whatever. And then all of a sudden he hands it to me. I look down and the cap's falling off already. Mm. And I'm like. Cigar's falling off. I mean, the cap's falling off. Like, you, you already broke the cigar. Right. And he's just like, oh, really? Nothing. Nothing about, like, hey, you know, you just paid this money. Let me create a good experience for you. Make sure you enjoy your smoke. Make sure it's well constructed for you. Because mm. you're about to spend an hour and a half, two hours at a spot. You know, make it worth my while. I immediately hand it back. He finally goes and swaps it out. I don't even do that with my $7 blondies. No. Like, I break that cap or something. I'm like, here, I'll be right back. Let me go grab another one for you. I can attest that you're right. I remember when I purchased a cigar at your place and it was random like we were talking about other stuff and i went to go cut it and you're like no 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 mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I remember that day i remember that day we was like no 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 no. give me the cigar and, and it wasn't now it was the the machine the mm. the v cut which has all the different things you're like no 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 you because you, you, you made the recommendation and this always stuck out in my head you said I don't think you should use a V on this. I think you should use a guillotine. And I specifically said to you, uh, I, I'm I'm a V or a bullet mm -hmm. if I can, if I can help it, right? Um, and you said no, no, no. You, 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 and and you you cut it, but the way you cut it, you just you you have you have that knack down, which I guess in your job you need to you right. you need to know it, right? We could do, and I'm sure it's been done multiple times here on our network, especially when it so you geeks have previously started. How to do a cotton light, and and but there's you know there's three sections to the cap, mm -hmm. and you got to get that first section the correct way. And that's even if you're lucky to have three sections. Well, the, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like I, I refuse, I refuse to cut up a drone. 
No, so. I refuse to cut a padrone. That a padrone should always be punched at the end of the day. Yeah, that's a single cap. You go right below that line. You take that band off. There's a good chance it's going to unravel on you, especially if you start salivating a lot. So, yep. But yeah, but you're right. Yep. It's just like you know, get it down. You know, it's like it's still all the time. People will come walking up. They want to use the you know the machine. And I'm like, hold up. Let me get my cutter out. You know, and whatnot. Let me do it right because it'll be a lancero. You know, you miss that cut. You change your experience. Next thing you know, that's a negative experience you're going to have. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's not, and it couldn't have even been my fault. You know, it couldn't have been anybody at, at the shop's fault. It was just one of those, like, it's a negative experience, and that's what we get associated with. Yep. I think that was a smart move that some of the guillotine cutters have put that stopper mm-hmm. on the other side because that gives you the, the proper yeah. distance there. Yeah, it um, gives you a shot at sure. it until you get a Belcoso torpedo. <laughs> and then you're just like, let me do 10 cuts to get to the right point. I got it. I got it. That's a good, that's a good point, too. No, it's, I'm just saying. That's the only reason why I get annoyed at him. <laughs> but, <laughs> sure. You know. Yeah. Uh, that's a good point. That's a very good point. <laughs> just, I don't know. It's I'm impatient. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, I, I get impatient when we're talking to Enrique. <laughs> the way he answers the question, like get to it. Tell no, me. I know, right? You know, and he, he's a fast talker. Oh yeah. You know, for, but you I know. love the stories though oh, that, yeah. that he was doing. That was insane. Like you know, yeah, that's something that you don't get an opportunity to do a lot. Yeah, you know, sit down, talk, ask him straight up, struggling over there. Yeah, nah, it's a lot of fluid. You go. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, brother. You know. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's just um, and just to backtrack a little bit to your uh, brick and mortar question, it's um. It's not so much just the experience in the humidor and, you know, rifling through, trying to figure out what you like, what you enjoy, but, you know, it's just, it's, you know, for anybody that does live an hour away that wants to go a little bit more frequently, you should always do it, especially if you can, like, talk to people, get to know know people. Because mm. at the end of the day, cigars are cigars, drinks are drinks. I, I always tell people, you can always go to any bar. There's plenty of bars, period, like, excluding cigars, just bars. Yep. But why do we always go back to the same one? It's not, it's not just because the people work there. Right. You know, like, why do you go back to the ones that you go to? Right. You know, it's just it's just it's just not the people that work there. I mean, that's a benefit, obviously, yeah. if you like them. But it's just also, how's the crowd? Yeah. You know, how's everything else? That or the menu out? or whichever. Yeah, you restaurant. Know, yeah. You yeah. know, there's a lot of aspects that come into it. So, you know, it's just something I wanted to say to people that do the 45 minutes to an hour drive. It's mm-hmm. just like, you know what? It might be worth it to do a couple of times if you can get away that much. Yeah. Do yep. it a couple of times a week. You know, obviously, you got to watch yourself. You know, if they have a bar, or it's BYOB. You don't want to play that game. But no, <laughs> still, no. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, how uh, stick chases? That's a great topic. People who chase sticks, um. who walk in. How do you yourself have that poise? Because ultimately, y- you could say we're gonna bring this in, and you bring it in. Mm-hmm. How do you wh- when? Because because you, you like me have the luxury of getting samples, mm-hmm. um, and some of them are really, really good, and some of them are not so good, yeah. right? And how do, you, how do you judge it? Because if I was in your position, I can answer how I would judge it, and, and I bet you the answer pro- probably might, might be probably similar. But how do you judge it? Like if you're trying it out and you say, okay, this is a brand new product, and you, you have to keep adapt to the industry, to trends, social media. You know it's a hot stick. Mm-hmm. And you have it, and you're like, eh. or you have it, and you're like, wow, this is really, really good. I never had this before, right? Mm-hmm. Which does happen. F- not, not so much this year. Creativity no, yeah. is at <laughs> is at a lull. Um, you know, I think uh, creativity has slowed down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also think that there's a bigger problem from Enrique's level. The barrier to entry into the industry is getting higher. Oh, it's so, brutal. Yeah. So, so it it you know. Um, how do you not stick chase and and what goes through your thought decision process to bring something in no oh, it's actually that's something i'm still trying to figure out to be honest it's um i'm sure it's a constant battle it's just because <laughs> it, it's it's non-stop it's, it's no different than um how can i how can i say this uh say you find a nice recipe or something that you really enjoy you know like it's uh you know you try it out once this and that and then you just try to keep going back to it but then it's more of like you sit back and you think about it, it's just like am i going to be able to move this for a while you mm-hmm. know, like, is it worth bringing in? Because is, if it sits on the shelf for so long, then it winds up in the steals and deals or in a pack or something like that, where mm-hmm. it's just kind of like, okay, so there's some money. And then, you know, Martin, uh, blah, 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 all the business side of things. Mm-hmm. But it's just, uh, for me, it's just like, I pay attention to my customer base. You know, it's just like, I know about my regulars that come in, like what they like to smoke and everything else like that. And I don't want to flood the humidor with a bunch of stuff like one-offs. 
mm. you know, here and there. Like, I want there to be a presence because I want to have a relationship with the company. So I'm not going to be doing that kind of like a little one-off situation. But I pay attention to that. But one thing that I do do that I, you know, maybe other spots don't have this luxury is that if I know a shop, another shop carries it, I'll send them that way. You know, mm-hmm. and I will tell them, it's like, listen, I don't carry that line. I don't, you know, and I apologize, but it's just like, and it's also, oh, why don't you carry it? And I'm like, listen, I've had the cigar. I enjoyed it, but it's whether or not I know it'll move at our spots. Like, mm-hmm. I'll grab some, I'll talk to Mike, the our other humidor guy, you know, as a humidor tenant, whatever you want to call him, but a wicked nice guy. Um, I'll ask him, it's like, what do you think about it? Like, here and there, I'll toss him the samples, but like, let, let me know what you think. And we'll talk about it here and there. Mm-hmm. Is it worth bringing in? If it's not, then it's just like, kind of sit back, I'm like, wait, go over to there. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll come back and they'll be like, hey, thanks for the honesty. That's a cool spot, but let me see what you got. I want to see what you got to do. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's not really so much on a business side. It's not a, like a huge loss not bringing them in. But every once in a while, every once in a while, you get that like nice little smoke. Like I'm smoking one right now, Espinosa, mm-hmm. where I'm like, I'm sitting back and I got greedy on this one. I'm like, I got to bring this in. Like yep. you, even if it doesn't move, I got to bring it in for myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So there is that point. Oh, dude, uh, I, yeah. I, there's a reason why I have the Holy Lancero Candelas from Illusione. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, yep. that's a cigar that doesn't move. And it's just like. I think you, me, and Eric are the only ones. <laughs> that's that's really what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I, I Eric doesn't about even smoke the Candelas. Eric doesn't even smoke the Candelas. You and me are like the only ones that actually pick it up. I Mike, love Mike that does stick. too. Yeah. It's different. It is, it is a good stick. It's different. But we smoke so much, we need something different in our lives every once in a yeah. while. Like yeah. the wasabi from Espinosa. Yep. You yep. know, uh, the double claro from LFD. Mm-hmm. Like the Candela stuff. It's just like, if you've never tried the Candela, you got to try it out. And it's not a cigar I will tell you that you will love, but you got to experience at least once. Yeah. It's so, it's so different. I, I say exactly what I said la- last week mm-hmm. it, well, when I was talking about Candela and there's like three Candelas that I really, really like. The Illusione Holy Candela is my all time fave. Oh, yeah. Second, I like do is the Rocky Patel um, Candela. It's, it's their Edge series Candela. Uh, so they did do an Edge Candela. No, they they did. Yeah, they, they, they did. did. Who knows what the hell they're doing? I was I, gonna I, say I haven't seen that on anything <laughs> in a while. I can't. I can't keep. Uh, to me, Rocky Patel is like the freaking stock market. Like you got <laughs> you got to stay on them every day. You got to stay on them every day to find out what's going on. And 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 there you go. Right. Yeah. And 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 then um, I did like the original. Filthy hooligan when it was straight candela, but now it's a baba pole. Yeah, it's still not a bad smoke. It, it is yeah. not a bad smoke, and 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 I encourage the story geeks like to go out there and find like that is like if you want to like learn about candela, like that holy land style candela mm-hmm. is 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 the way to go. Yeah. Because that is like you know if you want to take a class for yourself, that's like candela one hundred and one. It's you just I mean? you get that grassy sweet note, and then you just get that spice out of nowhere, and it's just a wicked nice complex smoke. Yeah, and then you get the salt from the candela. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on my palate comes back back salty, mm-hmm. and then you go. So your answer is similar to mine, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, I I um go a lot and i mention them all all the time on the show to a churchill smoke shop and lounge small shop 60 to 80 facings mm-hmm. and wicked nice guy and, and um you know we always t- we and, and they, they don't have a humidor manager right so they're always like you know hey jojo like you know what do you think about this cigar and i give them two answers mm-hmm. right i like it but it won't sell or I don't like it, and it will we'll sell. sell. <laughs> yeah. That's the other side, too. Right, too. Right, right, like, right, you got to right. get your ego out of the way sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know? Because I imagine, you know, I look at it like, okay, this guy's got, you know, he's got 60 facings on average. You know, it's his business model. It works. Tons of cash and carry. Rotates a lot of boxes. There you go. All right? And, uh, uh, you know, it's a different experience walking in there than walking into a place like yours. Yours is four times the size, mm-hmm. right? It uh, has its own member section that uh, comes with its own situations there. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, spacing of people and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and and so you judge it the same way. Like, you, you're like, ah, eh, I really don't like this. But you know 30, 40, 50 people in your mental Rolodex of consumers, mm-hmm. current customers, that it would sell. Yep. All that there. Yeah. I imagine it's pretty much that. And, and I think when you get to that point that you're, 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 you're understanding your palate and you're understanding – your customer base as well it's a tricky situation and the reason why i make reference to that because i've walked into random cigar shops where cigar shop owner wouldn't have a clue oh yeah <laughs> like i've had and we've had some stogie geeks interviews with cigar shops owner and i ask them that i ask them the same question okay yeah you go in what what do you what do you take your customers to, to be and they're like yeah well you know i don't really pay attention to my customers palettes and i'm like really hmm. like you know and so it's just it's just kind of 
you know, and, and hey, man, if you run your business that way and, and you're going, but yeah, there are a lot of people. And, and, and I know with, even with Drew, who uh, is late to his own uh, anniversary oh, party. Oh, that Drew. I thought so, you were going to say Drew stayed on the No, 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 Drew. <laughs> Drew stayed. Oh, I heard they sent you a gigantic, a ginormous ashtray. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. my God, that thing's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> right? That thing's but, heavy. Yeah, yeah, it is heavy, right? It is heavy. But, um, you know, I, I know with Drew out in Texas, like, they, they're, the business model of that shop is they're just the volume, mm-hmm. you know, the volume. A lot of boutique, but they have a good mixture of classics and that, and 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 they just they pay attention to what they're smoking, mm-hmm. but not why they're smoking. If that makes sense. So in other words, he knows that he's he knows that if he has these classics, they're gonna blow off the shelf, and these boutiques are gonna go for his regulars or whichever. Mm. But they're not out like the. I find the culture because we often talk about the culture, and he's had experience like me. I've covered a few shifts at Churchill's. I used to work there in 2014 and 15. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I worked there. Oh, um, I yeah. remember you. I had a terrible experience with you once. At Churchill's? Yeah, you handed me a Padron. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, you didn't. I never, I never <laughs> no, saw you there. I, I would not. I would not go to. I, I would not. They have Padron, Padron anniversary, <laughs> but in in the in the series there. But no, I. I I, especially if I was working there, I was. I would say I was a boutique stick chaser for sure. It's all pre-sto geeks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, it's different. You get a different perspective. It's, um, I'm in the same boat as you too. Mm. You know, because it's, I've been smoking the regular stuff for so long. I need that unique stuff, like Black Label Trading Company, Blackwork Studio. Yeah, prime example. Yeah, you know, I love those lines. Yeah, they yeah. were my 28 when it was 2017. I started Story Geeks in January of 2017, so it was like December of 20. 17 going into 2018 i said black label is like the 2018 Mm -hmm. um they were we did a top five of companies to watch okay for newer stuff and we were doing predictions seven months out for ibcpr at the time there and i and black label was my number one choice back in 2017 for the 2018 cigar companies to watch yeah, and but they're, they're super cool they, they're, uh, and the thing is what I what I like about them is they, they started more in my profile medium full mm-hmm. and now they're starting they still keep up with medium full profile but they're starting to dial back oh yeah some of their stuff that there. porcelain from them yeah that deliverance porcelain yep oh my god that's such a good Connecticut yep you know at the end of the day which is nice but here's actually there's uh, something else too on top of it if you want to talk about balancing and understand like from the business side of things, um, like here in, um, I would say New England, actually, I wouldn't even just say Rhode Island. Rhode Island's huge, mm-hmm. you know, with this. But Rhode Island is a uh, very, you know, who knows who at the end of the day. It's kind of like, you know, it's a name drop situation a lot of times, it's, which isn't a bad thing. But it's when you grow up here, you, you realize that representation and proper representation for a company can really make or break a cigar. Mm. You know, at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, I was doing that stick chasing for Black Label. And that's when I started realizing, okay, I got to take a step back and get my ego out of the way. But it was kind of like, you know, I wanted the limited releases from them. I still want them. But when you buy a few boxes of them and all of a sudden you're sitting there and like looking up and I'm like, they're just not moving. Yeah. And then I sit back and all of a sudden you put a rep in front of the people, start talking to them, give them some knowledge and stuff like that. All of a sudden... They eat it up. Yeah, it start, all of a sudden starts moving up. a little bit more. You yep. know, it's starting to pick up. Then people are walking in. Now they're expanding their palettes, all this other stuff. But sorry, I just wanted to go back to the no. Other that that, about that was my next question um, there um, before we get personal of what you like to smoke. But um, oh. you know, <laughs> uh, it was representation is so key, and I, I know because I've seen you do it. Like you know, someone walks in your shop and is like, "Where have you been in six months?" Now I understand <laughs> here in the Northeast, your you, for some shops just to give. Some geographical reference. You cover Jersey to Maine. Mm. Oh God, yeah. Right, and, and and it's very tough. You can't be everywhere. What was Mick doing for Black Label? Was it Virginia and up? And it was yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was, it was yeah. Virginia and all the Nick, way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mick. He was a skinny kid. Uh, yeah, older, uh, older gentleman, yep, yep. ex-military. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He Air was, Force, it was Virginia and up. It's like how, it's, how can it, you do that? You, you, but I, I don't know. Like again, uh, in in anything in life for me. When I either interview someone or, you know, let's face it, for business, we're really interviewing someone to see if they qualify for our package of whatever it is that we do for outside work. And and you're constantly interviewing or being interviewed and, and moving there. 
um, you always reverse the role, I think, is a smarter way there, like, to, for success, right? Like, if you were a rep. So if I were a rep, and I know that I had to cover Jersey to Maine or Virginia to Maine, I mean, <laughs> I would throw at least what's freaking new in a box and FedEx it with a handwritten note. No, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and the thing is, and, 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 and they don't do that. Yep. And, and it's like, it's a missed out opportunity. You know what I mean? Now, in business for us, I, I know a customer today. I had a conversation with a customer today in a cybersecurity where we set an appointment for August 14th. Right? It's just fresh in my mind, right? Because we're going to discuss 2021. Mm-hmm. And I'm comfortable with that. Cause there's a ball of motion. There's a so I reached out to her today on a whim. I knew I wouldn't get anything. They were going, but you gotta you gotta at least stay in front of the people. You gotta stay in front of people, regardless. And a lot of times they don't, and they blame it on the geographic. Well, it can't be everywhere at once. It's like, dude, you like, I, if it were me and I were a cigar rep for a, a, a territory that big, it didn't matter what I sold. Mm-hmm. I'd be at least freaking. Hey, man, you got an email? Yeah, listen, I'm gonna send you some samples. Let's have a stick together. Uh, via Zoom, mm-hmm. right? And you, your, your, whoever you report to on that side, hey, I'm gonna spend 45 minutes with the rep. You could talk. You could accomplish the same thing. Oh yeah. And 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 have any of the reps gotten creative with that with COVID? And oh, probably not. Oh yeah, no. I mean, oh, because they have. Well, yeah, because you you just dropped it on me, and it's like we were just talking about Mick. Like mm-hmm. Zoom wasn't a thing when Mick was in sure in the game. Like this guy yeah, was yeah. a really nice guy, and he would yep. come up every uh, two, three times a year. I mean, actually, I'd probably say three to four times a year. Really nice guy, but Zoom wasn't a thing. Now I'm having meetings like, uh, what was it? It was uh, at a Zoom call with Illusione. Yep. It was uh, us. It was me and a bunch of other shops around the country. Uh, around Actually, it was New England. Yep. Um, for it. And we're sitting down. We're all talking to, like, Dion actually made an appearance on there. Um, a couple of the reps were there as well. So it was just like, so we, they're putting the sticks in our hands without actually putting the sticks in our hands mm-hmm. on that. But then I got uh, another situation where a company actually sent me the sample package, like what you are talking about. And it's just like, hey, let's do a meeting on this, and we'll talk about what we have coming out, the cigars, this and that. And it's just like, so I'm sitting there, I'm smoking, I'm talking to them, and going through it. And it's just like, okay, I want to pick up this, want to pick up that, you know, and eh, this one's not so much. So they are starting to get a little bit more creative yeah, with it. They have to be, yep. But the representation as well is, um, and it's maybe you have an answer for this, because it's one thing to get the cigars in like a person's hand for mm-hmm. a shop. Yep. But I'm still trying to figure out how somebody with that situation kind of does it for the consumer. Because it's nice to put the cigars into a uh, nice smoke, by the way. But it was um original. Oh really? Oh, you never had an original? Well, that that's a nice smoke. Let me tell you about this smoke. There's two things I don't want to interrupt you. No, but, uh, trust but, me, I'd rather talk about this. But you interrupted mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> when I had um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we're having a personal conversation here. Yeah. 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 Sorry. When, when I when I when I had a conversation with uh, Alec Bradley on the show either with Jonathan Lipson or the boys I double them as the boys Alan's kids Alec and Bradley mm. um, more Jonathan because he's the marketing director over there I asked him I says let me ask you a question why the hell don't you guys sell the freaking original tapers anymore <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? and, and he's like well I don't know. That, that, that was like, you know what I mean? like that, that, that was like oh, the, the off air you're getting ready for Story oh, yeah, Geeks yeah. <laughs> which by the way before you um, when you come on to interview with Story Geeks that like ten of that ten minutes before the show is is ultimate chaos. We got Johnny barking in our ears doing sound checks, Gustavo mm-hmm. running around making sure the cameras are positioned, Johnny checking that, making sure that's good. Just because because Gustavo's new, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a crazy time. The 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 interview person is on is is on the Skype or Zoom, starting questions, and that was one of our off air questions. And yeah. he goes. He goes, why? I was like, because th- that's what got me into Alec Bradley. And then you switched it, and then it's there. You never, you know, oh, yeah, here, yeah, have one. No, 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 hold on to him. Hold no, on please, him. I go, I Buddy, I, I don't even have a taste now, because I can't wait for the follow-up question that you said. I got, box, I got boxes of them, yeah. Not, have you ever had the Room 101, uh, 10, 1,000 death, uh, 100, 100,000, no, no. 100 death buckets? No, I never even heard of that one. when, um... Uh, was it Booth? Yeah. 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 yeah, it's right. Booth. yeah. Booth. Uh, 
retired and came back. Oh, when he came back from yeah, doing the come jewelry back thing? Yeah, yeah, the comeback tour. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> comeback tour. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Thousand Buckets and the original Alec Bradley. Oh, thank you, bro. You didn't have to do that. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. It's yeah. freaking... It's... Uh, I, I, I have a friend... Um, who loves the original Tempest with me and we, you know, again, talk about brick and mortar. Like we would go there and have the original Tempest and whatnot. And when uh, Alec Bradley shipped them to us at Story Geeks after my Jonathan Lipson uh, interview, mm. I called him up and says, hey, stop by Story Geeks. I, I got it. It, it was Ian. I says, oh, I says, okay. <laughs> I says hey, I got the original Tempest. He's like, are they, are they really releasing it? I go, nah, they're not. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you know how Enrique says they have sticks in the back and whatnot? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah I, got, I got some. So, yeah. Yeah, you got that connection with it? They're there you so go. good. No, it's not a connection. No. <laughs> it was, uh, did you get your box? Yeah. Okay, quit your bitching <laughs> and enjoy them because that's all you're getting. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, you want a fun, fun, uh, funny story that happened last week to me about Alec Bradley? So we went to that bus, uh, that bus show, the regional. The bus tour with no bus. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So it was. Um, I was waiting for you to drop that. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm walking around. I was ha- waiting for um, uh, I'm not gonna butcher his last name, but it's uh, Mike uh, Larivier. I know I, I messed that up. Sorry, Mike. If you actually see this, um, from Rocky Patel. I was waiting for him. All of a sudden, a gentleman comes walking up to me, and I'm just like, and you know, we're talking real quick and this and that, and he's uh, the rep for Alec Bradley. Mm-hmm. So John. I'm, yep. Yep. No, it's, uh, yeah, John. No, yep. no, it was, um, so I'm sitting there and we start chit chatting. He's just like, he made, drops just like you. Oh, I'm from Bristol. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, you're from Bristol? What part? And he's like, oh, I'm on Hope. And it's just like, why? Do you know Bristol? I'm like, yeah, I grew up there for a few years. Yeah. He's like, really? It's just like, where'd you grow up? I'm like, X, Y, da, da, yeah, yeah. Da, this and that. And I'm like, hey, by the way, do you know the Martinos? And it was just like, and he says something to me. And he's just like, I'm like, no, not those ones. It's uh, Carlo and, um, Carlo and Dino Martino. And it's just like, and all of a sudden, some huge smile on, on uh, his face so I got told years ago and I didn't realize it I had never it's, I forgot the name and stuff like that he looks at me he's just like <laughs> <laughs> he's just like I'm related to Rita <laughs> and I'm like he's he's related to me by no, blood no kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting there I'm like of course of course the Alec Bradley rep is of course related to me he's like a distant cousin or something for me and I'm sitting back I'm like all these years and I'm like it's just there's somebody in my life that like was into cigars it was destined for me to get into this that's but I'm Rhode sitting, Island for you yeah I immediately backtracked I'm like oh crap here we go gotta play the family card next anyway yeah. <laughs> so but anyway but can we get these in here yeah if you bring back the original real, exactly <laughs> you know give me the original blend on the Prinsado please <laughs> you know right uh, uh, yeah right. it's just don't get me started on that right. also, although I do like the lost art but anyway what were you talking about I already forgot um where were we you were talking about um well I gave you the thousand death buckets no I know that but before that nice yeah. you are destined to be on the story <laughs> <Yeah. show. laughs> oh, it'll come back it'll come back like three episodes later oh perfect can't wait for that it'll we'll start randomly back. talking about it in between two. <laughs> yeah well, well, like we randomly talked about this see you always yeah. worry about content content just comes uh, it man. just does you know it just comes yeah, yeah for sure no I lit up a cigar and you you were like the dog with the fence God, <laughs> yeah, just say. Like, is that what I think it is yeah man that's the original listen I wasted four months in a relationship I should have ended just because she lit up a cigar and loved it <laughs> like, <laughs> I should have broken up with that girl, and I'm just like, Let's talk about that. No, I can't. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you want to? Hear, there's a couple stories out of this. Uh, uh, sure, quick. Yeah, yeah, real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she lit up a Herrera Esteli next door. Mm. So we were just hanging out. She lit her up, and she's just like, I really like this. I'm like, I love you again. So it was the worst relationship I was in. It was a, we shouldn't have been together. It is what it is. <laughs> but it was um ends badly, whatever. So a few months go by, and I'm hanging down at uh, down in Westerly mm-hmm. for a Drew event. Oh yeah. And I'm standing there. I'm waiting to say bye to him, uh, Nick and uh, Big Mike yep. that are down there. I'm waiting to say bye to him. And I look over, and there's this behemoth of a human being, like just a tall dude. And I look over. I'm like, hey, you Willie? And he just looks down at me. And he's just like, I'm 5'6", by the way, so I'm talking about looks down um, <laughs> on me. But it's uh, <laughs> he's just like, yeah. And I look up at him, and I'm like, I fucking hate you. <laughs> yeah. oh, and then oh. I looked away. I didn't even tell him like why I hate oh, him. Man. It was a second later. I'm like, by the way, <laughs> this is why I hate you. <laughs> no, you can't it was go your, there. <laughs> it was your cigar <laughs> cost me four months <laughs> of my life. And he just started laughing. And I just walked away. And I'm like, I talked to Nick the like a few weeks ago about him. I'm like, hey. 
hey, please tell me you didn't tell him where I worked yeah, yeah, <laughs> when right, I right. dropped it on it. But, but that's how it is, though. It's just like when it comes to cigars, I'm a freaking, you know, I'm a dog on a bone. It's just like, yeah. freaking, well, let's talk about this instead of what else we're talking about. I think I think that there, there are some that, 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 that do take it to that level. Mm. And, there are, and there are a lot of patrons that you have that are at that level. Mm. And there are a lot of that that are not. They don't get involved in all of what this entails and all of that there. And, and Mm. You know, at the end of the day, they're enjoying a cigar. That they're finding a little bit of, 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 of uh, saneness mm. in in a very unsane world. No, that's an understatement. You know, for sure. So, um, back to the customer experience, and then I want to pivot to my girl's experience and what she chose, and then we'll we'll, we'll do a wrap up. But um, um, in regards to the customer experience, like, how do you not stick chase? You know, because like. Sticks get delivered here because, like, hey, I have a Scott company, your podcast. I looked you up, Google found you, and like, I mean, randoms, like, mm. you know, <laughs> and 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 you know, I often think, like, wow, like, this is really, really good. And then I do research, and I'm like, wow, this is not even relevant here in the Northeast, like, they mm. don't even have them and whatnot. And and so, how do you not stick chase? Like, how do you put put the brakes on that? Oops, sorry about that. Um, from a customer standpoint or my standpoint? Yours. Mine? It's, uh, it's, it's cash money, baby. <laughs> you know, I can chase all the sticks I want, but if they're not going to move, I shouldn't bring them in. Yeah. You know, it's kind of one of those things. And it's it's reading your customer base. Like, I believe, uh, was it you that I was talking to about Houston with mm. the uh, Lanceros? Mm. No, it was, um, oh, I forgot who I was talking to. But I was talking to somebody about the shop down in Houston who carries a ton of Lanceros. Mm-hmm. And if, you know, if you're a big cigar person, like, you know for a fact that it's just, um, Lanceros don't move. It's my favorite size. It's, I know if you, like a lot yep, of us. I like a lot, yeah. If you smoke a lot of cigars, it's a, it's a cigar smoker size. Yeah. Lanceros, Petit Corona, Short Panatellas, like, all that fun stuff. But they were telling me about it. I'm just like, it's interesting to see the two different markets. Mm-hmm. So when I sit back and I look at my guys... These are probably the same guys that go to the same restaurant once or twice a week on a scheduled basis. Mm-hmm. You know, like they'll go on date night on Friday night, but they're back there on Wednesday with the boys. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you they probably get the same meal every single time. Sure. Or maybe one, two, or three different options for it. Yeah. And that's when I started realizing with my customers, and I love them for it, is that, you know, they it's a sure thing. Like, I know they're going to go back and they're going to smoke what they want to smoke. But that's also the chase that I get. Yeah. Where it's like, let me get them off of this. Right. You know, let right. me get let, let me get them into something new, brand new that they haven't tried before. At the end of the day, you know, because then you start expanding their palates, then they turn into us. Yep. You know, we're now their stick chasing. Yep. You know, and it's just like, and then you sit back and you have great experiences, great conversations about. It's like, hey, just like you said, have you tried this yet? And I'm like, no, I haven't tried. It's like, oh, let me give you this, and I'm like, oh, let me mm. grab this for you. Let me put that in your hand. Yeah. You know, from our own stash, and then all of a sudden it's that brotherhood, that sisterhood that comes out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, that comes that's into That's super it. cool. The, 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 that's a super cool stick. Interesting. Uh, I'm gonna review it. I like the uh, band on it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's interesting stick. When are you gonna sure. talk about it? What? When are you gonna talk about it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> the uh, next episode. How about next that? Next episode? Yeah, next episode. I thought I was going to do it every other week thing. You're going to bring me back. Then to I'll, wait I'll, yeah. wait yeah. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. Maybe I'll just come back next week if the viewers don't hate me. Right, there you go. So. There you go. <laughs> you know. Awesome. What w- Personally, what do you smoke when you're not working? And because, like, I, I often get this question, especially like when I'm in a shop and, and they're like, what are you smoking? And I'm like, you know, I try not to tell them because mm-hmm. like they can't get it. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm just like, you know, ah, you know, it, it's this. And like, well, I, I've actually, I met someone, his name's Nelson, right? Super cool guy. Uh, he does cybersecurity for Citizens Bank. So we, we get talking and, and all of that at the shop. Again, one of the benefits going to brick and mortar, just met him. And I told him about a cigar, and he's like, I'm like, you, you can't get them here. He's like, order it. Dude, he bought it. Yeah. Because he's like, he's like, when you back something, like, when you fucking get Google Gaga or oh, something, yeah. mm-hmm. like, freaking, uh, but, the, but there's an opposite side. When I hate something, you know I walk oh, around the okay, shop yeah. for six months. I fucking shit. Ah, I, got, like, I got five cigars left in the box. <laughs> this guy comes in and goes on a rant with one customer. I'm like, well, there goes the sale on that one. No, it ain't that bad. <laughs> it ain't that bad. So, so what do you smoke when, when you're, like, recreationally? <sighs> Dude, I'm so far down the rabbit hole now with it that it's just, it's, it's tough. You know, it's kind of like whatever I'm in the mood for or whatever I have in my hand. Like, I've been on a kick now where it's uh, the 1988 Warped. 
1980 by Warped. Yep. Yeah, wicked nice smoke. It's an absolutely great price point too. It's like a nine ten dollar stick. A um, little bit on the pricier side, technically speaking, but at the end of the day, it's just like it's a really smooth smoke. It's, you know, I was at another shop and I put at least four or five people onto it where they come back to mine and they're just like, Adam, you got to get these. And I'm like, I had, you don't understand this business side to it, but it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah, the yeah. proximity plans. But it's just like, but they're like, dude, you sold, like, that's all we buy over there now. You mm-hmm. know, I'm not even at my own shop and it happens, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, but it's just, um, but outside of it, it's just kind of like, it's whatever piques my interest at the end of the day. You know, it's, uh, you know, how hot is it? How cold is it? But one of my go-tos, at least, if I can say with, like, 100% conviction, is Aladino. Mm-hmm. You know, the Aladino line out of Honduras, it's uh, Christian Uroa's dad and brother. Well, yep. it's under their name, JRE. Um, Christian Uroa is the original owner of Camacho before he sold it to Davidoff um, out of Honduras. A really, really nice line. It's a medium-bodied smoke. It's a scar that I give to people when they say I exclusively smoke Cubans mm-hmm. because that's that Cuban-esque taste to it. Yep. The natural tobacco, a little bit of saltiness. It's missing the cocoa. Yep. That you kind of get out of Cubans, but it's um, but it's one of those things where it's just it's smooth and elegant. It's a cigar I give to people to get them off the flavored stuff mm-hmm. because I know it's not going to be overpowering. Yep. But it has that complexity to get them intrigued about what else is out there. Yep. You know, instead of jumping for like the mildest of the mild. Do you ever have that cor- 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 yo- cor- 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 Reserve? Corojo Reserve. Corojo, thank you. Yeah, Corojo Reserve. I'm glad you're on the show. You can correct me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but Paul, it's, Paul used to correct me. Oh, no, yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, is he like me too? Or <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you got any Olivia's? The, Oliva? Uh, yeah, 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 same thing. Yeah, no, same thing. No, yeah, well, no. There's no <laughs> I right there. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> know. <laughs> you know, all, the, all the worst is when I butcher sponsors, sponsored stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, but, that's uh, even but, better. You know, I, I, I've been doing it since day one. So, you know, the boss set low. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no. Only way is up the, from there. It's the Corojo Reserve. So, unfortunately, I have never smoked that cigar sober. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Every time I've had it, I haven't been. I, that cigar, right, was one that was selected in um, that, Be- that Bethany got for me. Dude, that's awesome. And, and, and she walks into a cigar shop, and she's like, listen, a significant other smokes cigars. And she knew I knew the guy, yep. right? So she's like, "Mr. Smokes cigars. He's all over the map. He tastes cigars. He's, he gets a lot of access to cigars, this and that." And 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 then they said, "Well, what does he normally smoke?" And of course, she throws out the big D. Oh, he loves Davidoff, right? You know, he tells me, he tells uh. me that that company does everything <laughs> right. And and you know something? It's funny because the Security Weekly listeners know I'm smoking a Davidoff because the way I. I, I take off the label and I'm like, this Very fucking delicate. company does everything right. <laughs> like, everything right. I love this company. You, you never right? get too much glue on right, it, pretty right. much, yeah, and whatnot. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and, so, and so, of course, he's like, yeah. Um, no, but, um, you know, what else is he like? And she's rattling off names and she told me the names and they're totally like, not what I smoke. Like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So the kid's like, so the guy's like, all right, listen. I'm going to put together a five-pack. You know what I mean? This is not. She's like, yeah, just put together a five-pack. Like, freaking boom. So she didn't know what she was buying. Yeah. <laughs> and it was the Corojo Reserve. It's just. It's, and that is a freaking awesome stick. I'm telling you, Aladino, <laughs> that line, you know, from JRE, yep. it's, it's if you're, obviously, if you're listening right now, you're listening, try to find them. Like, yeah. it is just, it yep. is, it's. The construction's great. Quality control is great. It's a smooth smoke. It's a cigar that you can have at any point in the day. Mm-hmm. And it's just the Corojo Reservas. I still got to go back and, like I said, get it and actually just sit back and smoke it. Yep. And um, they got some new stuff coming out, too. It's just I'm excited yeah. to see where the company's going with them. Yep. I think the from your perspective, good, great uh, concept, when they originally came out, they were in a bigger box. It was hard for you to display. Mm-hmm. You were there and... Beautiful artwork. Correct me if I'm. Oh, that was a phenomenal packaging. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, but was that tougher the to move than a traditional box? It, in a way, yes, but for the most part, no. Because I tell people all the time, ninety percent of cigars is marketing, yep. like from the business side of things. You know, but the display that they had, I mean, it was a huge box. I'm talking about. It must have been like. I don't know, an 18 by 12 or something, maybe even bigger than that, yep. you know, for it. And luckily for our humidor, we can set it up easily because we have s- shelf space that accommodates for it. You know, other spots, maybe not so lucky. Mm. You got to pray to have an island. Right. But let me tell you something. It draws the eyes. Yes. It just, it draws the eyes. It brings you into it. And it comes with about seven different sizes in there too, which is really cool, especially when you want to try to educate people and let them know, like, listen, you're going to, sp- if you take a Toro and then you smoke a Lancero, mm-hmm. especially you have a very uh, refined palate at the end of the day, it's you're going to get 
a couple different tastes mm-hmm. too. It's not going to taste exactly the same, you know. And it's just like so that gets fun, you know. And then that starts piquing people's interest a little bit, where it's just like, oh, do you have this cigar? I smoke the Toro all the time. What do you have it in Lancero? Do you have it in a Robusto? Do you have it in a Corona? You know, I want to see what that's like. So mm-hmm. display wise, difficult depending on the shop. But also, if you can switch it out and you know, pop, probably throw in an, um, that old school style where you get rid of all the boxes mm-hmm. and you only have like just the shelf space and then you have the name on there, and then you really got to walk people through it and have the cigars stand for their own because mm-hmm. now you don't have to play the marketing game with it. Right. You know that'll work. But if you don't have the shelf space, it's a pain. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's, and this is something that a lot of companies are starting to pay attention to, as well, like the design of boxes, size of boxes, and everything else that comes through. No, so it's it's interesting to like kind of take a step back and look at it from that perspective. Yeah, but that cigar is definitely a must smoke. Yeah, that cigar's a must smoke. I I got it, and I'll be going back there and getting some more for sure. Yeah, we'll talk about where that was at afterwards. Yep. Mm-hmm. Second one she got me was the Tatuaje Anarchy. Chaos. Oh, the new one. Yeah. Oh, I know where she went. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, also the Tatuaje uh, Kappa Special, se- uh, seventh Kappa Special. Oh, the white, the white label one. The white right? label. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a good smoke. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 uh, and then she got me um, two of the crown heads. One of them I've had is Jericho Hill, mm-hmm. and the other one was the last. Something about Calaveras. That. Yes, thank you. Yep. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Was, was there? Uh, I haven't had those two yet because I've I've never had the Las Oliveras yet. It's a that it's, was a cigar that when it came out it hit the market strong. Really? Yeah. In my mind, it's like I'm obviously like you got to talk to the owners about it. Yep. But that is a cigar, at least in this state. Yeah. And from the cigar smokers' perspective, yeah, that was a cigar that helped put Crown on the map. Yep. In Rhode Island yep. with the cigar smokers. You know, it's so a really elegant smoke. Her rationale when she trusted the Fiverr, he sold her on the Alandino, mm-hmm. right? Uh, she knew Tatuaje because I have a, a, a black on black Tatuaje hat. <laughs> <that I wear. laughs> and she knew the crown because when she looked at the label, she goes, He has a cat like that. Like, you <laughs> right. know what I mean? So he was like, All right, I got her, I got yeah. her, I got her. You know, and I remember when we interviewed John um, from Crowned Heads, he sent me a hat. No, oh, did you know, he? Yeah. And what I think that's super cool about Crowned Heads, just just side note, is that when they released swag on their um site and mm-hmm. they and they burn through a lot of it, they only do like hundred and fifty of of each. Oh, it is limited. And, and then burn and burn and then blow it out. So you get all super cool oh, yeah. all super cool thing yeah. uh there. You, you know? wanna talk about marketing, that's uh that's a group that Yeah. Gets it. Yep. Between the swag items, uh when they came out with the edition limitadas. Yep. It's just like, you know what? Let's pull some Cuban people over real quick. Yep. Because it's just like the same exact band, second secondary band on the bottom of yeah, it. Yeah. And it's just like that's a brilliant idea. You yeah. know, and their and their cigar stand by the way, their cigars do stand up to it. It's not just like one of those I'm just gonna sell you based on the marketing. Yeah, yeah. But their cigars are worth trying. Yeah. And it's just um you know, they do it right. Yeah. I don't know why they should. It's, I don't know. I feel like they should be everywhere now. It's My, probably a production problem or something. I don't uh, know. I don't know. I think, of uh, again, it's representation. No, that's true, too. I they think, it's, I think it's just representation in the Northeast. And, you know, we are with a lot of, of 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 market to be had here in the Northeast for sure. Oh, it is. Between you know? New Hampshire and Rhode Island. Mm. You know, it's just you can't go upstate New York. Yeah. So I have a bus tour in Mass. Genius. Yeah, and, and, no, I know. <laughs> anyway, anyway, <laughs> awesome. I went to it. Why do you sound more upset than I did? Because <laughs> you know why I sound upset. I, I went, when I when I read the press release, um, I think marketing wise, it's good to get out there and then to do that uh, there to do a tour. But when I got the inside review as to who's actually going to show up and then do that. Mm-hmm. From your perspective, not from my perspective, right? I've always taken the stand <laughs> that podcasts, cigar podcasts, we are what we are, right? We, we uh, choose to run the podcast whichever way that we want to. We all are just like cigar shops, little versions of different information, different styles, different styles of shows, mm-hmm. right? And that relationship is between you and them. We, if we're a really good podcast, we interview people throughout the year anyway, and we get tons of press releases, mm-hmm. right? You know, I got a press release this week, protocol, 
did a a, a a swimming one, something to do with a pool. Oh, did it? Yeah, I got you know another press release. You know, uh, slacking the uh, Cohiba Royale, I think it is, off my head. Oh, they're Cohiba. doing that again. It, yeah, you know, this and that, and they get all different. I get, we it get bombarded with them, right? So, I've heard you know, great things we, about we that one, by the way. We, what the Royale? Yeah, I've been hearing some good things about it. Uh, let me tell you something. Um, they sent the samples, and I, I never look it up. Mm-hmm. Right, I go. I have a sample side for Story Geeks in the humidor there, there, right? And um, we have what we have to smoke for promos, right? Mm-hmm. And then we have what has been, you know, gifted to Story Geeks for the tryout and whatnot. Yeah. And you know, I do a lot of reviews off air, obviously, with 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 Paul. And so um, I choose to smoke them blind. When I mean blind, like I know what they are, but I don't look up price point. Rapper buying the filler. Thank you. Because it's, it's exciting. Like, for me, it's like, all right. And honestly, that was one of the sticks that came, and it took a month for me to get to it. Because I was like, eh, you know, and I finally got to it, right? Because mm-hmm. we're, we're, we're bombarded with tons of stuff. Plus, there are some days I want to come in and smoke what I want to smoke, yeah. right? And so um, when I had it, I was like, oh, whoa. What's this? Like, yeah, this, you off guard. Yeah. this is not a Cohiba, right? <laughs> to me, uh, on my palate, this is not a Cohiba, and I'll be reviewing that soon as well. It's on my, it's on my Rolodex of of things to do. But uh, yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's it's it's, it's a good smoke. Okay, no, no, never had one. No, it's actually because it's. Uh. Who around you is, Joan? You know me. I don't shop online okay. or do anything like that. So. My, but when we take off headphones and go, I'll get you one. You no, can, no, yeah. no, no. No, you already gave me two guys. Don't worry about it. Take it. It doesn't uh, matter. For you. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Take it. It'll be great. You yeah. know. Yeah, let me know what you think. Because honestly, I like that. Uh, you know, you and I run cigars off of each other for years. Or at least two years that yeah, I Yeah, I was going to say. It hasn't been that. <laughs> you know, you know, I mean, it's been a blur. You know, I have a 22-month-old. I lost <laughs> track of time. <laughs> and, just, and you know how I lost track of time? You know how I know I lost track of time? Sunday, I'm at my friend's house. Same pool party. People saw me down at the computer. And my girl goes, what's the dog's name? I'm like, I don't know. They got it like six months ago, right? And so my girl goes to Jay, oh, you got a new dog? She's like, we've had this dog two and a half years ago. And they're they're like, JoJo, they're like freaking where? What the hell planet are you? I go, you told me you rescued a dog. I go, we were sitting at Churchill's. You told me you rescued a dog. You told me to make a model of the dog. Make a model, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me to to breed the dog. This and that. I was like, freaking with that conversation six months ago. Dude, that was two and a half years years ago. ago. (laughs) I was like, I was like, oh, I was like, well, you know, well, your kid's like four. He's like, no, he's five and a half. half uh, (laughs) And then so time stops. I don't know. Because my brain... Like, those are, like, you're important in my life, mm-hmm. right? But, like, those details, like, when you got your dog. Like, I remember the conversation. Yeah. But time stamp it, I don't know. It gets tough, especially, the, with, especially with everything that's going on now. Like, we're just bombarded with everything, with everything uh, that's going on. Honestly, like, 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 I'm sitting here and I'm looking at, you know, my email. And it's like, ping, ping, mm-hmm. ping, ping. And because I did Stogie Geeks this afternoon, I get to unbury myself from email. <laughs> In the arena that we're in, and then there you go. So uh, don't leave without your Cohiba. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining us. Joe, it was a pleasure. I appreciate Don't be it. a stranger to the show. I'll try not to be. I <laughs> would love you to come back and talk about sticks, and I'll keep you uh, abreast as to who we're going to interview and what the next step is. And maybe you can come here for Drew's, uh, Drew, Drew's, Drew's <laughs> one-year anniversary birthday for Stoey Geeks was today. And... Uh, he was. He got really tied up. I did speak to him this morning, and he was so excited. No. Uh, and he was like, "Listen to me, to the sticks and all that stuff." And I was like, "Dude, no, it's all good." And I got a text at quarter of, and it's like, "Dude, I, I'm. I just. I can't bail." And I'm like, "That's fine. I, I get it. I get it." So thanks for coming off the bench. Hey, thanks for having me. And I also want to tell everybody out there, you know, thank you for having me as well. You know, hopefully I didn't like, you know, throw anybody off, but I appreciate you and I love you guys, even though I've never met you. Just love the community. So I oh, just want to say thank you to all of you. I think at the end of the day. I think you'd be a good addition to the show for your perspective. I think the retailers, um, the the retailers that stay in, it's good to ha- that that tune in. I think it's good to have your perspective as well, mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, you guys are the ones that have to go out and push this, uh, and you're engaging with customers and giving them the experience and your questions to any pers- people that we interview would come from that perspective mm-hmm. as opposed to mine, which is like, get it in his hands, get it in his, in his hands, hands, drive right? it, drive it, <laughs> drive it. Get your rep there, get your rep there. And by the way, for you reps, and I'll leave you with this note, 
there's a company called FedEx or UPS <laughs> or USPS, right? At least dump some freaking samples in the mail and follow up with the phone call. It might be worth three dollar shipping handling because then if you can book appointments and say, "Hey, I'm gonna be in town three months from now," at least they'd be waiting for you. Mm. And remember, you uh, create demand that way. It's just a tip. If I was a rep. That's what I would be doing all day. Mm-hmm. I'd be just, you know, it doesn't have to be monthly, but at least every six weeks, getting that fresh, getting that fresh, because you might try something and say, you know something? It now could be the time. Yep. Because just like when you go through your Rolodex and of, of your customers' profiles, three months ago, if I would ask you for an analysis of your custom, of the Havana Club's profile, I'm sure it would change till now. Oh, it is completely, and that's what I'm dealing it with changes. right now. Yeah. It, it, cha- it changes, and, and then you have to find that balance. So yeah. there you go. So Stogie Geeks, remember, we keep the conversation going all week long. Go to stogiegeeks.com. Follow us on Facebook. If you have any complaints, email them to drew at stogiegeeks.com. <laughs> uh, you want to come on the show and share your experience, Joe H at stogiegeeks.com. Behind every story, behind every cigar, there's a story worth knowing. Get out there and shop local. Support your brick and mortars. Special thanks to J.C. Newman, Placencia Cigars, and the Havana Cigar Club. Stow your geeks. We'll see you next time. Peace.